with Miami. Katie Meyer in her 18th season, the longest tenured coach in the ACC, and what she's been able to do as far as building this program is very impressive, has obviously been honored in different ways, especially being named the AP National Coach of the Year back in 2011. So she is trying to see if she can catapult her team in the top 25, one of those bubble teams at this point as we are now underway. Georgia Tech starting off with the ball. Miami has won three straight, including their previous matchup at McCamish Pavilion. That was back on January 12th. Miami with a 69-60 win. So of course, Georgia Tech has revenge on their mind. Top of the key and Georgia Tech strikes first. Well, Miami and their player to player defense, and anytime you get some points from Oranes, you're doing really well if you're Georgia Tech. Here's your Miami starting five. That has not changed all year. They're very consistent on what they've been able to output. As they're looking for their first points of the ball game, Cavender at the top of the key, back iron. That's pulled down by Swartz. Georgia Tech starting five has changed up a few times throughout this season. They've had more than anything that's notable, a lot of youth in their starting lineup. They've had three freshmen that have been in that starting rotation. Seven new faces on the roster, four freshmen, three transfers. So a team that's really trying to find their footing as far as the new faces and the chemistry that they're building this year. Yeah, it's taken them a while when you have the new faces and especially when those some of those new faces are freshmen, especially the point guard position. Uh, I think Coach Nell Fortin has done a great job of having patience with her team and allowing them to find their identity. And just like that, Miami now on the board with a long two. And you can see the full court press coming from the Canes. And this was an emphasis in practice yesterday for Georgia Tech was to handle the press and not turn the ball over. So you see here, they got it down. They were able to get a shot, which is outstanding for Georgia Tech. Walking on the line, so that's going to be a turnover. It's going to go back to the Canes. And Sports had that rebound. Transfer from Boston College, the super senior as they're calling him. Leah Williams moving the ball around the perimeter. One of those players that really stood out in her freshman season now, just trying to find her footing in year two. Was on the all freshman ACC team last year. You can see Georgia Tech being more patient than they were the last time they played Miami. Blackshear knocks it down. And you'll see Tony Morgan make plays, whether it's for herself or for her teammates. She's really good at getting downhill with the basketball. Nice pass there. And so both teams really just finding ways to find their teammates at this point, going back to Tony Morgan. She leads the team this season with 77 assists now. And more importantly, you can see even in her time in that role as a freshman, the talent that is in the ACC, she's leading all freshmen in rebounds as well. Front iron for the Yellow Jackets, and Cavender comes down. Cavender, the last game against Princeton, didn't really score, but she had nine rebounds in that game, so found other ways to impact her team. Scored in double digits in nine straight games this season. You mentioned her not just finding her way on the offensive side this time, but how about Blackshear in this play? Yeah, able to get downhill whenever she wants. And I, one of the things that I asked Coach about, uh, Coach Fortner about her was, her, I said, her, she's already college strong when she came. <laughs> was that some way she came in or from workout? She's like, that's, that's how the kid came in. I mean, wow. she seeks out contact, and she can score with that contact. Blackshear actually missed. Kara Dunn underneath. Blackshear on the baseline. Same spot, different results. Can't knock that one down. And Cavender once again out of the pack. Going right at Blackshear. A little bit of contact there, so there's going to be a foul that's going to go against Kayla Blackshear. That will be her first. One of the things that Cavender is really good at is just probing and probing and forcing the issue until somebody stops her and obviously got fouled there by Blackshear. You'll see her do that the entire game. That's the first foul of the ball game. So as far as the pace that we're seeing going back and forth, even with the Canes in the full court press, Georgia Tech has been able to handle it well. 
And the pace is good for Georgia Tech as long as they take care of the basketball. Jasmine Roberts working her way on the inside. She draws the contact. She'll step up to the strike for two. Roberts has been playing really, really well since she was put in the starting lineup for Miami. I think she put in the starting lineup, obviously, because Harden was injured, and then mm -hmm. when Harden got healthy, they decided to keep her there, brought Harden off the bench for a while, obviously starting the game today. But that's a tough combination for anybody playing Miami because they both can score and they both can rebound really, really well. Last game at 10 points. She had her career high, 23 versus Virginia Tech. So a player that had some dips, ups and downs as far as roller coaster ride offensively throughout the season, but can definitely put the ball in the Close to turnover at the top of the key. Swartz recovers it. Swartz, again, can't connect. She's yet to get on the board. Georgia Tech's leading scorer. Let's hear some oohs and ahs from Williams as she's trying to get to the paint. That's poked out of bounds in Miami. It will seem will get the ball back with 20 on the shot clock. You'll see Georgia Tech, they are active defensively. Last year, one of the best defensive teams in the nation. They are going to continue to move, especially uh, Black and Sheet is always moving, never stopping. And that's a big worry last year for Miami on Georgia Tech's team. Another knocked out of bounds by Swartz. You said one of the best teams in the nation. How about the best team in scoring defense in the ACC last season? That's been the thing for Nell Fortner and her staff in this program, just building solid defensive teams, especially in the last three years. Trying to see if they can continue in that tradition at Georgia Tech in this year with so many new faces on the roster. Great defense underneath Georgia Tech, knocking that back out of bounds. They'll get it back with eight on the shot clock, but you talked about defense right on cue. Yeah, Arana is doing a great job of just holding her ground, not leaving her feet, and keeping her hands up in the cylinder. She scored the first two points and really played great defense on Pendande up to this point. Until there, Cavender, who's been so solid. You mentioned just what she's been able to do for this team so far this season in her first year. The transfer with her sister as well from Fresno. Morgan dishes it out to Swartz, left alone, and can't connect. Miami fortunate there. You definitely don't want to leave Swartz alone. Canes get it back, Williams dish underneath. And that's another bucket. That one goes to Jasmine Roberts. Georgia Tech looking for a good possession here. They have four empty trips down the floor. Miami right now on an 8-0 run, and that stops the bleeding there as Blackshear knocks it down from the top of the key. Well, Miami trying to extend that matchup zone, but they left that elbow area open. Blackshear able to hit that. That's an easy shot for her. Harden at the top. A lot of contact at the top with Williams. Maybe just lost her own footing. A little bit of a tussle underneath, and the officials clear that up right away. And we've got a good one so far. Miami went on the 8-0 run. Georgia Tech said, we're not going anywhere yet. Down four. Foundation, we were able to highlight Katie Meyer and what she's done, we would be remiss not to talk about the resume of Nell Fortner in her fourth season. We already mentioned how she has made her mark defensively on this squad, but most importantly, I thought it was very interesting how after that last game against NC State, she said, I am so proud of this team and how resilient they've been not to give up. Starting the season in ACC play, 0-7, finally being able to pick up three games, three wins in ACC play, and crediting her team for sticking with it and sticking together. Yeah, I asked her how they were feeling after the NC State game, and she was really proud, said she really enjoys coaching this team, but they have always been confident, just taking them a minute to be able to put it together. Williams tried a little bit of in one mixtape, <laughs> trying to get to the rim there. A turnover for Miami. Jackson, this is underneath to Blackshear. 
nothing called, and it's actually going to stay for Georgia Tech. Well, you see Georgia Tech attacking as soon as they get the ball over that second line of the press by Miami, and that's what you have to do. It's very similar to the approach, too, when you're looking at Duke as well. Other teams, just what they've been able to do, breaking that and just keeping up with the pace. So Canes actually get the ball back after a turnover from Georgia Tech. That's their third of the ball game. You got Williams playing the zone, uh, the point guard here. So look for outside shots for Cavender. Oh, she missed an opportunity to get the ball to Pendande there. Called her own number trying to get to the rim. Didn't hit the rim at all, so they have five to work with. Williams once again to the rim. She gets that one to go, though. And it's really tough off the bounce, all of Miami's guards. I really think they need to pay attention to Pendande there. She's working really hard. They've got to give her the basketball. Four of Miami's starters are now in the scorebook. I'm going to roll my R's a lot today. <laughs> <laughs> I always look and I'm like, oh. She challenged us to be better in that as well. Well, I, I think that, you know, they played with a smaller lineup, Georgia Tech, but I'm not surprised that they would go with, a, with her in the post today. They're going to need her against Pendande, against Spearman, and against Oldacre. A lot of contact underneath. Once again, Cavender has been so active, creating second chance opportunities. Almost cost that one up underneath. Pendande couldn't handle it. Bounced around a couple of times before the officials Say, this one's going to go to Georgia Tech. You have a couple of substitutions on both sides. Spearman checks in for the King. And if you're Georgia Tech, you're okay with Miami taking those three-point shots. Where they hurt you is in that mid-range area off the bounce or for layups. But you've got to get the rebound when they miss because they're excellent rebounders. Maria Hermosa checks in for Georgia Tech as well. See Morgan not afraid of the contact at all. That gets poked away. She tried to work away on the inside. Cabiner at the rim, nothing there. Spearman with the cleanup. Spearman just freshman losing with talent. But that's an example of what they were worried about yesterday. Live turnovers allowing Miami to get in transition. They had 32 transition points the last time they played Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech looking for some offense. Morgan gives it to him. See Williams gambling there, helping on Hermosa. So the last three trips down the floor for Georgia Tech, they found some success. To see if they can slow down Miami. It's been the second chance opportunities for them. They already have four points off of their turnovers as well. And winning in the department off of the rebounds. But Williams, so crafty, getting to the bucket. She's going to get to the bucket. And that's, you've got to stay in front of her. And that's way easier for me to say over here <laughs> with earphones on than, than uh, being out there. But that's a big part of the game for the Miami guards is getting to the basket. Almost a miscue at the top of the key. Morgan gets it back. Working baseline, rises up, misses everything. And that's going to go to the Canes. And you see Morgan coming out just a little bit frustrated. Things aren't going the way that she would like them to. Some calls she thought she might have gotten, but as a freshman, you just have to learn to get over that and go with the flow of the officiating. You see Old Acre now. This is a lineup that they practiced yesterday, and I asked Coach uh, Katie Meyer, are you going to go with your two big kids? She felt like they had an advantage there with both of them in the lineup. So we'll see how they get into the high-low with the two big kids today. And a Cavender also on the floor. You said big kids. You almost delivered it right on cue. Misses the mark. Old Acre McDonald's all in there. Very high basketball IQ. They're really high on her. Hermosa trying to work her way on the inside. That's blocked. By a few canes, Dwyer tried the in and out. No success there. 
Correa left alone and gets the bucket. Dwyer is so speedy, sometimes she's too fast for the basketball. Last possession that Miami can hold for this first quarter. This has been lightning speed as well. Not a lot of fouls called. Quick pace by the Kings. Cavender for three, gets it. Last second heave for Georgia Tech, not enough. And Miami right now in full control with a 19 to 13 lead after the first frame. And the other Cavender able to shoot three pointers. But the associate head coach for Georgia Tech, she was diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer in November of last year and made a formal announcement about that diagnosis. The following month, she actually kept that as long as she could because she said she didn't want it to be about her, but look at it now, how a tribe comes together in support. You can see the team as well wearing the Tasha Tuck warm-up shirts, the pink ones that they are wearing today. They've been wearing those since she has announced her diagnosis, and it was very interesting too for NC State to bring them up on that matchup from last season and to honor her as well. Just understanding that they are together in this fight. And I was talking with their SID as well, just about what they've been able to do as far as raising money. The student actually took over the foundation and said they're trying to raise $100,000 for treatments, Tasha Butts, and in collaboration with the Play for K Foundation, they actually said they will donate $150,000 programs that are underserved as well if that is matched so just everyone being there for one another within this realm of just fighting such an incredibly horrible disease and we'll take you back to how we got to this point Kay Blackshear started off with a hot hand we saw her really working the the baseline a lot for Georgia Tech but at this point Miami has been able to really have a balanced attack and hitting a couple threes as well. Yeah, and, and their starters have been on the bench, and I think it's it's really interesting to see how they're going to exploit this big person lineup, the two big people lineup, and you have the guards here with the press. Oh, nice, almost a little tip there, nice block. And Dwyer almost did everything possible to get that one, but can't convert on the turnover at the top of the key by Georgia Tech. Hermosa left alone for the 15-footer. Rims out, Dwyer with the rebound. Kyla demanding the ball in the paint. You were talking about how they reward their big women in, on the inside. Well, I'm just sitting over here as a coach going, there's a reason I have 6'4 and 6'5 <laughs> in the game. You'll get your shots. Let's just focus on those two. And Spearman, she's a kid that just unbelievable athleticism, can shoot threes, can run the floor, can block shots. You see Old Acre working really hard here. Gets it on the inside, misses, but draws the contact. So we're able to step up to the free throw line. We got a couple of subs that'll come in on that second free throw. Actually, they're gonna bring him in now. Well, here's your Tuesday college basketball doubleheader right here on AC Network and the ESPN app. Lake Henson and Pittsburgh host Louisville at 7 Eastern. And then it's off to Charlottesville for Terquavion Smith and NC State taking on number six, Virginia. Talking about the games that are coming up as well. How about that matchup between UConn and South Carolina? Sold yeah. out. I asked my friends to keep me updated <laughs> <laughs> on the score there by text. Uh, phenomenal guy. Obviously, you, um, you know, UConn's had some injuries, but, you know, Gino's not going to let them not compete. Mm -hmm. they're gonna, if they've got five, six, seven, he doesn't care. He's not going to let them have any excuses. So I know that's going to be a great game today. And you see Miami no longer post-centric here, trying to speed the game up a little bit. And they do. Morgan able to retrieve the ball a little bit, but she's grabbing at her left knee. As Cameron Swartz had a nice take, gets fouled on the play. And you see her advocating to get some calls from the official. She 
feels like she was fouled there. Well, they do get free throws out of this possession. Cameron Swartz steps up, knocks down the first one. She's shooting 84% from the free throw line at this point. Uh, neither team had turnovers in that first quarter, but now Georgia Tech has five and Miami has four. Well, how about Cameron Swartz? She's picking up her first point of the ball game, the leading scorer for Georgia Tech. That's coming from the free throw line, 0 for 4 from the field. And they wanted to make sure that if she took a shot, it was a contested shot. And Donde trying to work her way to the rim, can't. Morgan advances. Hermosa with the screen at the top of the key. Now there's a mismatch there with Hermosa on Cavender. Now they got it, they got it worked out with Tendande back on Hermosa. Missed opportunity for Georgia Tech. That's topped at the top of the key by Pendona. Cavender lets it go, and another three goes down to the cane. She hasn't gotten as much playing time as her sister, but you can see she has the skills. She can shoot threes and she can pass. And that builds on the largest lead for Miami at 10 at this point. Yeah, one of the emphasis was you've got to actually be out there and you've got to have your hands up because those Miami Cavender twins will shoot the basketball. How about Pindande with the nice screen at the top of the key to open her up a little bit? They worked on it in practice. <laughs> it's always fun to, to be in practice to see what they work on and see what they transfer to the actual game situation. Laredo, not able to knock that one down. Georgia Tech struggling from outside, only one for five from distance. And the two threes that have already gone down for Miami coming from the Twins. This one given up to Pendande. Less than 10 on the shot clock. Destiny Harden couldn't connect. And that's brought in. Georgia Tech doing a great job. Pindande always wants to go to that right shoulder, and they're not allowing her to get there very easy. And she's struggling on offense right now. I think more than importantly, Georgia Tech just limiting Miami right now and trying to find some ways to improve on the O boards or the defensive boards, because Miami already has eight to their one. Swartz with eight on the shot clock just grazes the rim, and Dwyer had a foot on the line, grabs it. So that's a reset of the shot clock as well, and Georgia Tech will get it back underneath. Yeah, just unaware here. Yeah, that's the right call. So she'll take a trip to the bench. Coach will probably Have touch on that a little bit about it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, kid, you got to pay attention. So fresh shot clock for Georgia Tech. Morgan thought she had a lane. Cut off, Swartz, pull up. Short. Williams, so fast, dishes it up. Pendande able to corral it back in, just short on the layup. Great defense underneath by Georgia Tech. The Georgia Tech post players have been really good standing their ground and not fouling in the post. Cavender again, can't connect on this one. Harden tips that one to herself. And that's where you struggle. You allow Miami guards to get offensive rebounds and they get a fresh 20. Not only that, 10 off offensive rebounds for Miami. They have nine second chance points. Short on that one, Pendande could have made it 11. Jump ball and this one's gonna stay with Miami. So Pendande had a hard fall on that last play. Hopefully everything is okay. We'll return with basketball play right after the break. We're fun in partnership with the WBCA and the V Foundation for cancer research. Donate at kyow.com. This is obviously one of our favorite days that we get to celebrate and honor the great Blake Kyow and looking forward to sharing more of those stories 
as we continue in this broadcast. But when we're looking at the stats for this one, Helen, the thing that jump, really jumps off the sheet right now is Miami just looks like the sense of urgency is a little bit sharper for them. O boards, 11 to one, and they're out rebounding Georgia Tech at this point, 24 to nine. Well, and as I said, the guards are the ones who are rebounding. I you see an opportunity for Georgia Tech here to score. I always like to mesh my gut feeling with the numbers. And I said at the beginning of the broadcast that the guards had, you know, 52% of the rebounds for Miami. When we went to break, we saw they have 54% of the rebounds here and seven points off turnovers. And they averaged 13 points off turnovers. So that's really the difference here. You see with that 26 to 16. Um, and that was, again, an emphasis for Georgia Tech in their practice yesterday was transition, live, uh, live turnovers that lead to transition baskets. Here, none at the line, knocks it down. And that ends a 326 scoring drought for Georgia Tech. And he hasn't been able to score in the last couple trips down for themselves either. Cavender. There's a mismatch here. They've got to get the ball into Old Acre. Old Acre misses at the rim. There's a foul on the play. It'll stay underneath. So you've mentioned just the amount of opportunities underneath. This could be really built on as well with points in the paint. You said you wanted to see more of an emphasis there. Miami winning in that department, 14 to four. And it could be more if they haven't missed some of these really bunnies here by the post players for Miami. Williams, pump fake at the top of the key. That's poked away from behind. Kara Dunn, bounce pass to Morgan. Morgan with the finish with the left. She has such really good spatial intelligence on her body when she goes up in the air. She's able to adjust and contort herself to either take the contact to score or avoid the contact. Blackshear with the rebound, going back to Morgan. Hardy has four career double-doubles. This one she had was against NC State. And just a player that's just so balanced in so many fronts that she's trying to find her way at the top of the key. Scored over 2,000 points in high school. Over the left shoulder, Hermosa drains it. Well, good to see her being more active. That's one of the few times for both teams where they've actually gotten something out of their half court execution. Take the sky just open the lane for Carla getting to the rim. I think the most impressive thing is just the patience that she had getting to her look. And I think she is somebody that could really give more offensive output for Miami. Hasn't played a lot, but does have the ability to shoot threes and to score. Nice little bump there, not able to hit the shot, but good read there by Dunn. See, Miami just being real indecisive. Their first thought is not a three-pointer. Their first thought is to drive to the basket, and Georgia Tech doing a great job of not allowing them to get where they want to go and forcing them to make other decisions. You mentioned that, and you like numbers, so that's what they're playing at this point. Points in the paint, 16 to eight. They've only knocked down two threes so far, so really picking their poison at this point. Threes go to Haley, who has been on fire. Hermosa at the top of the key. She finally drains it. Hermosa, another player. We've seen some ups and downs from her throughout this season, but a player last year that gave them so much in different departments can also see some climbing in this season. Uh, last couple of games, given more of what she's capable of, and 
you know, this is a different team, and she has that ability for them to rely on her more, and she's come through the last couple of games. Yeah, she had 14 points against NC State. She had seven rebounds to add to that as well. Under the 92nd mark now in the first half. Area Vets couldn't get that one to go. I've not seen Harden in a while from Miami, so I'm curious as to why she's been on the bench for so long. And now she's getting up to come to the game, into the game. They really need her in the game offensively because she and Roberts are two of the players that can create their own opportunities off the bounce. And if Georgia Tech's going to pack that in and not allow them to get to the basket, you need players who can score that way. And create their own, too. Harden, one of those players that can put the, the ball on the hardwood and gets her own shot. Played 11 minutes, 0 for 3 from the field, back in the ball game for the Canes. 19 on the shot clock, 111 on the game clock. Right away, Hermosa getting a look. Do you like the high, low look from the top of the key with that rotation? I do. I love the way that she ducked in there. Just really active, and Spearman just a little too slow. And see here, just working, 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 and Spearman just a little too slow trying to cut that off. She has really good footwork before she gets the basketball. And that's just something that Spearman's going to have to work and get better at is playing defense and not allowing post players to go where they want. And she will get better as she gets stronger and gets more experience. All right, well, here's next Thursday night's women's basketball doubleheader. Olivia Miles leads the number nine Irish against Pittsburgh at 6 Eastern. Then Diamond Johnson and number 15 NC State take on Jewel Spear and Wake Forest. Should be a great night of women's hoops right here on the AC Network and the ESPN app. How about Jewel Spear? Your former team, Dean Deacons, Fear taking care of business. Fear, yes. Took I'm down. always up for Wake Forest doing well. <laughs> Took down Louisville for the first time in program history. Another 30-burger for Joel Spear in that game as well. Mm -hmm. Olivia Miles just so impressive on this season. She's like a walking triple-double. Nice dish on the inside. A travel is going to be called. That's going to be the ninth turnover for Miami. Uh, interesting lineup for Miami now. You've got three kids here. Both the Cavender twins and Gavard, who was coming out, who can shoot threes, trying to spread the floor a little bit, trying to spread Georgia Tech out a little bit and try to get the ball inside. Pendante's had a tough, tough day today around the basket. Right now, Georgia Tech on an 8-2 run. And outscoring them 11-9 here in the second quarter. Blackshear to the rim. We're looking at a one-possession ball game after Georgia Tech was down 10. Blackshear, a kid they were worried about, Miami was, because she never stops moving on either end of the floor. Top of the key. Gondonde able to draw the foul there. But to your point, Helen, they are really making the Canes decide if they want to shoot threes and trying to clog the paint on the inside. Well, Pedande's really struggled today, partly because she always wants to get to that left side of the basket. And I think Georgia Tech's been doing a really good job of not allowing her to do that or crowding her. And she's got to learn to score on both ends, on both sides, excuse me, of the rim. Pedande knocks down her first free throw of the ball game, one for five from the field, as you mentioned, just her efficiency on the day. Gets both of them at the line, 1.6 left. We'll see if, if Georgia Tech heaves it. They do. Morgan gets the ball, has a good look, and gets oh, it to wow. go. Outstanding play. Outstanding play by Georgia Tech. Just like she drew it up, full court. Dwyer takes a challenge, gets tripped up. And how about that? So the officials will take a look, but they won't be looking long because that one's good. <laughs> Those threes, right? They're only shooting 22% from three-point range. They're not taking advantage of what they've been given, which are those inside shots right, right. there at the basket. So 
I wanted, she wanted to go with two big kids at the beginning. I thought mm -hmm. it was great, not really working for her. So what does she do here in the second half? Really adjusting, you already mentioned it, how they've been able to have the 11 second chance points. Miami starts off with the ball. That rolls around, rims out for Jasmine Roberts. And it's a jump ball. This one will go to Georgia Tech. But getting back to this point, how Georgia Tech working their way back into this ball game. We already mentioned and highlighted the three players that they've been able to do that with. But for Miami even, the three ball, as you mentioned, only the two coming from Hannah. 0 for 7, the rest of the team. So Georgia Tech, known for their defense, really finding something that's worked for them in that second quarter. They outscored Miami 16 to 11. And that was big yesterday in practice. Coach Fortner said they needed to have a really good second quarter, which they did. And again, just playing chess with defense and making them take the shots that they wanted. And you have done here, able to hit the three-pointer. Great start here to the third quarter. And Georgia Tech takes the lead for the first time since it was 4-2. That was at the eight-minute mark in the first quarter. Here comes Georgia Tech. They are just really good at paying attention to personnel, paying attention to some of the things they went over in practice in terms of how they wanted to play particular personnel. So Padande gets the baseline jumper. You see how they're really pushing the Canes out of the paint at this point in the second half to start. Morgan with eight points, three for four from the field. Swartz as well, who's had a slow start, just 0 for six from the field. Back iron. Jasmine Roberts looking for a shot of her own, can't get it. Harden had limited minutes in the first half. Had the 11th, been an extensive amount of time on the bench as there's a lot of contact underneath. Cavender just collapses as she collides in the Kara Dunn. Sand Dunn pushed her down here. Again, three pointers for Miami. I really love the way that Georgia Tech is sort of dictating the types of shots that Miami gets. Nice back door there. Cavender can't connect on that one. Swartz right away looking up the floor. Both teams have done a relatively good job as far as preventing fast break points. Georgia Tech has the edge five to two. We've seen the full court press from both sides. Blackshear. Nothing on the inside. Pack paint once again for Miami. Swartz short on the shot. Now 0 for 6 from the field. 0 for 2 for 0 for 3 now from 3. They're doing a good job of making her take contested shots. She's gotten very few wide open jumpers. At 24 points twice this season. Season high she had against Clemson. As well as NC State. Williams at the top of the key, trying to work the baseline a little bit. Good footing on the inside, can't connect on the shot. Well, even when Miami has gotten layups, they've all been really hard shots. Georgia Tech's been a great job of contesting without fouling. So just making sure everybody is set here. Officials took a little bit longer to pass the ball in. Harden right away. And that's why you said you wanted her on the floor, her ability to just score at any level on the, on the floor. And they talked about not relaxing when you're guarding her in practice yesterday because Miami does a great job of posting her up. And you see the result there. Back door. Cameron Schwartz almost gets it to go. I don't coach this team, but I'm so proud of them because they went over that in practice yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I saw how elated I'm you became. I'm so excited. They ran it unfold. exactly like they threw it up because they know she's going for the three-pointer and she went back door. So kudos to those kids for listening to their coach. That was awesome.
Right, well, every Thursday at 10 Eastern, right after our women's basketball doubleheader, nothing but net crew will break down the night in the ACC with highlights and analysis of every women's game. And look ahead at the best games on the schedule in the coming week. That's right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. So those free throws tie this ball game at 34. Williams from distance, another short shot, but another offensive rebound, Helen. Now that's where Georgia Tech's got to make sure that they don't allow that. They did a really good job of getting the type of shot that they wanted, but you got to finish it with the rebound. Cavender splits the trap at the top of the key, but short on the shot. 15 offensive rebounds and just Miami not being able to connect on those. This could be a double digit scoring lead for them at this point if they're able to convert these second chance opportunities. But right now the Yellow Jackets just hovering them. They're really making every shot difficult. One of the things that I was talking with uh, assistant coach Janice Johnson about that they were worried about was how Nell Fortner is able to communicate with her team when they can hear her they understand the who, what, when, and where, and why, and they're able to execute. And she's done a great job here so far, them getting the types of shots that they want. Mm -hmm. Blackshear's got maybe three of those shots at the elbow, just taking what the defense gives them and taking advantage of it. Blackshear, the only player in double figures at this point with 10. She's above her season average as well, averaging close to eight points per game. She had the 19 points versus Clemson, so a player that's really getting going at the right time, a big part of their success in these last four games. Williams pushing the pace for Miami, gets it to go. Haven't seen a whole lot of that from Miami because Georgia Tech's been really good with, ball, with the ball. Well, not an us. Slows everything down for Georgia Tech. Blackshear from the same spot, bounces around, can't get that one to drop. When the seas part. That's two layups in a row for Miami. Jasmine Roberts saw an opportunity. How about her minutes? As you mentioned, coming off of the bench as well and what she's been able to do for the Canes. She only averaged eight minutes at two points last year, so quite an improvement for her. Less than 10 on the shot clock. Adonis. Well, that's, that's college strength right there with the, get that rebound. And Miami can extend the lead. This is passed out, back-to-back -back shots by Jasmine Roberts. Well, coach might want to think about a timeout here. Does, she, does her team need it? And they do. Miami on fire with back-to-back -back buckets from Roberts. Yeah, Roberts with a three-pointer, causing them to call a timeout. They got to get reset. Welcome back to Watsko Center. And Coral Gables, Cameron Swartz, right before the break, got fouled on a three-point play. Four-point play, rather. The three was under review by the officials, as we can see from our amazing camera crew. The perfect angle, and the officials did confirm that it is a three-pointer. So she will step up to the free throw line for one. Yeah, in any special situation for Georgia Tech, out of bounds, last second, you've got to find Swartz, because inevitably the ball's going to find her hand. And no communication there, miscommunication there by Miami defense on the on the out of bounds play. Knocks it down. You can see the full court. We're seeing more of a one-one two from them switching it up a little bit than what we saw in the first half. If anything, just slowing Miami down, making them score out of their half court set. See, there's a post up by Harden there. And we weren't able to see her because Spearman brought her defense in there. How about the battle underneath between Harden and Cameron Schwartz? One on the shot clock. Miami, do they get it off in time? The officials wave to the score table. That'll be under review. 
But for now, that's good. That was that was close. It looked like it. That was close. Jackson right away getting the ball on the inside. Hermosa, who had a solid first half performance, just continues to build on that, getting the ball at the block. Well, and she's someone that Spear Spearman forced out of the line. Let's see if this is good here. Ooh. I, from that angle, it looked like the ball was still in her hands. I think I'll have to agree with you there, Coach. So Hermosa stepping up to the free throw line for the second time for today. We get the benefit of replay. We do get the benefit. Hermosa drains it. And this is good for Georgia Tech. The better Hermosa plays, the better it is for them. And she's a player that even if you push her out from the lane line, she can still score. She can hit those 15-footers from anywhere on the court. Georgia Tech with a little press here. A little 2-2-1 to eat up some time. Williams in the role at one Harden. And see, that's what she's good at. That's what Georgia Tech has not been allowed, has not been allowing Miami to do. She had four double doubles last season. You can see how important she is this year. She's averaging double figures with this squad as there's a foul that's called on the play. Now Fortner in disbelief trying to get some type of answer about what occurred there is one of her players is <laughs> one I think it was a little bit of friendly fire underneath though. Yeah, I didn't see a Miami player near there. So Miami putting Old Acre in there to try to get a little bit more strength against Hermosa in the post. She comes in for Spearman. Hermosa tried to dish it in on the inside. That's quickly picked off by Williams. The hesitation, nothing there. Great defense by Hermosa in the paint. And how about Oldacre? If she holds you. And able to get in there and get her defender under the rim. And smart for them to look for. She has a lot of promise for Miami. Hasn't been able to get the minutes that they thought she would get early. But it's going to be really good for them. 6'6 six, six freshman from Mason, Ohio. Schwartz sends it to Hermosa. Now that's a woman's shot. rebound there by Harden. <laughs> she just took the basketball. Miami Cavender trying to get to the rim, gets it to go. That's seven straight made field goals for the Canes. And that's the advantage of having guards who can rebound. They can start and end the pass break on their own. They don't need to pass it. Six zero run now for Miami. Jackson asked for the screen at the top of the key. She has eight seconds to work with in the shot clock. Short on the three. Cavender is going to reset the offense for Miami. There's less than one minute to go here in the third quarter. It's been a quick third quarter. We've seen a run from both sides, but Miami really putting their foot on the gas in the last few minutes of this third quarter. Right now, outscoring Georgia Tech 19 to 13. And as we mentioned, on the 6-0 run over the last two minutes. Jackson held up at the top of the key by Williams. Swartz. Trying again and gets it. You can't just be there with her. You've got to have your hands up. So back-to-back -back threes by Swartz after a very slow start in the first half. Got her first field goal of the ball game in this third quarter. Now she's joined Blackshear with 10 points. Five on the game clock. Williams finds a lane and gets it to fall in. Last second heroics by Williams to extend their lead to six. Well, the Miami guards have taken over.
Weber with rebounds and driving to the basket. And they've got a six point lead going into the fourth quarter. There's right away, she was close to picking up a steal there. So Tony Morgan right now, after you mentioned that extensive time on the bench, eight points in her 23 minutes of play. And the fourth quarter is going to be a big one, as we can see this. Just a one possession game and a foul on the play. This one's going to go against Hermosa with the bump. That's just her second personal foul. You see Georgia Tech coming in with Bianca Jackson here. Trying to get maybe a little bit more offense. Right away, how about Harden? The in one. And that's the impact she has, mid-range. They can't stop her, gets to the spot. She's had four opportunities here, two in the out of bounds where she has been posted up. She was one for two and two for two on these uh, mid-range shots off the bounce. With six points, it seems like she should have at least 12 points at this point, the way that she's been able to get to her spots on the floor. And they've been using her sparingly here. Again, that should never happen. Uh, offensive rebound on the free throw. Blackshear saved them with her active hands. That rims out. So Dunn not able to knock down the layup. Harden blocked by Hermosa. <laughs> make her earn it a little bit harder <laughs> in that one. Yeah, just get that out of here. Don't dare, I'm 6'4". Let's watch and see if they post up Harden again here in the out of bounds. Cavender took a moment to see who she wanted to get it into. Finally relieved. Interesting they don't have the other Cavender in here at this point in the game. Area Vets held up on the baseline. Harden short on this one on the other side of the free throw line. Still the shot that you, you like from her. That one less so, but the rest of them, yes. If, yeah, that's one of those, if she hits it, it's great. If mm -hmm. not. They've used hard and sparingly today. But she's been effective when she's been in the game. Cameron Swartz has been effective in the third quarter. Second half has been her time as she sends it off to Morgan. Hermosa might have been in the way for Swartz coming back for the top three. Instead, they get a nice look underneath. So Caleb Blackshear, now with 12 points, leading the way for Georgia Tech. Area Vets. Gets the contact there, and those are the type of plays that you want to see from Miami, getting more opportunities at the free throw line. And getting them off the drive there. Hand off, a little bit of a dribble drive and an opportunity to get Two easy ones from the free throw line. All right, well, our next all access, the ACC Life is a very special one and premieres tomorrow night. We'll take an emotional journey with ACC student athletes and administrators from all 15 ACC institutions, Trout of Montgomery and Selma, Alabama, to experience and learn more about the civil rights movement. Dalen Cuff, as well as ACC Unite Selma to Montgomery at 7 Eastern right here on the AC Network and the ESPN app. I think when there's a switch on Morgan, when she gets switched on the area, that she should take advantage of that off the dribble. She's looking to run the play, which is fine, but I think she can take area deck off the dribble.
How about the youth? Starting the youth. Future sure is bright. You're looking at Williams and Morgan on the floor. And another three. Cameron Swartz, I don't know what the halftime speech was, but she has definitely been feeling it here in the second half. Well, they have been there, but they have not had their hands up. And she doesn't need much time, and she does not need much space to get her shot off. Started the game 0 for 8, now 3 for 10. She's knocked down three threes already, shooting 50% from distance. That's a good timeout by Coach Katie Meyer because they need to get themselves set because they've got to win this game if they want to get off the bubble. Why did we choose Safe Light? <coughs> well, Helen, I think not only are you a great analyst, you can be a great coach as well. You've already shown that. You set us up perfectly for bracketology play. Right before we went to break, you said, this is Miami team is a team that's on the bubble. And right now you're seeing Charlie Cream, who I don't think it's any sleep, no, has given us an update. No, 2, 3 in the morning. <laughs> I'm grateful to get him, but my goodness, get some rest. And talks about the seeding and the teams that are looking to get in at this point if they're going in with their records. You can see Miami at the 11th seed we talked about what their resume looks like to this point. They won one game in December. That uh, was just against North, North Florida. Fun. They went on a five-game win streak. They do have really good wins against North Carolina as well as Virginia Tech. But finding their way up into those rankings would be very helpful. And this is the type of game that they need if they want to stay in conversation on that bubble. And, and Georgia State's going to give them all that they can have, just like Clemson did last week. But you look at their resume, quality wins against North Carolina, who is in the top 15 now, and Virginia Tech as well. And that bad loss to Florida. So this is really an important game for them. This is an important possession for them here. What do they do? Do they go inside the old acre or stay outside? You saw the net of Miami. I think just overall, looking at how strong the ACC is, they're just beating up on one another at this point. We had six teams that are ranked in the top 25. As you can see they're the most of any D1 conference, but you're looking also at the net. So each game, very credible, even if there isn't a ranking in front of that team, their net overall is very important in that conversation in seeding in a NCAA placement. Yeah, and he's uh, Charlie Cream's projecting eight ACC teams to get into the tournament. So what do you do here offensively if you're Miami? You try to get something going to the basket with your guards. Not a lot of time to work with. That's tipped. We'll see if they're able to recover, and that's going to be a shot clock violation right out of the timeout. Yeah, very slow developing play there. I thought they should have had a little bit more sense of urgency. Somebody should have been paying more attention to the shot clock. That's a 12 turnover for Miami. That's Cameron Swartz, who has been lights out in the second half, leading Georgia Tech with 13 points. Three threes will definitely help the conversation there. Swartz gets it, pulls up. Missed the mark. Nice pass. Hermosa flying in. That was almost down. Couldn't convert for the Canes. Morgan working her way left side. And Quint can't quite convert for Tony Morgan. As we see a couple of substitutions for Miami. This is a better offensive team for Miami now bringing in Cavender and bringing in Harden. I think Miami, they're able to beat Georgia Tech off the dribble. But they've got to really work the basketball around, change size of the floor so they can get them on the reversal driving to the basket. Well, Miami looking for some type of spark on the offensive side. They haven't scored in the last three minutes as we're in our last frame of this ball game. This is their horn set, which I think everybody in the country runs this play. 
Once again, short on the shot clock for Miami. Two to work with, and Cavender's gonna get called for the offensive foul. Another turnover, the 14th for Miami. Give credit to Georgia Tech here, playing good defense. Swartz staying in front of the ball and also getting a hand in the shot. So three empty possessions for Miami. Would it be remiss if we didn't talk about the defense for Georgia Tech as Harden showing some defense of her own. She's gonna be fouled. That one going against Blackshear. Harden does a great job of getting in the passing lanes. Leads the team in steals with 24 now. Seems to always come up with that big play when they need it. So Blackshear picks up her second personal foul. Timely plays, winning plays that they needed. Harden can break the drought here for Miami. Haven't scored in close to three minutes. I think Coach Katie Myers done a great job of playing her for a few minutes, giving her some rest, coming back, playing her for another few minutes, giving her mm -hmm. some rest. She's able to go hard for the little time that she's in there, be effective for Miami. Harden struggling from the free throw line. She only had the one previous one off of an and one. Now 0 for 2. She's got five rebounds. Look at the guards rebounding for Miami. Five rebounds by Harden, six by Roberts, four by Williams, four by Cavender. Seven by Dwyer. Cameron Swartz held up at the half court. And Morgan asked for the ball, setting everyone up as we're approaching the halfway point of the fourth quarter. Hermosa finds Dunn. You tell the back door cutting that you were mentioning in practice. Morgan sees a lane, can't connect, and another empty possession for Georgia Tech. Williams by Miami. sends it up to Cavender, all but down. That one's knocked out of bounds, but the reset as well as the possession will go back to the Canes. Four-point lead for Miami. This is going back and forth throughout this entire time. Six times it's been tied. Seven lead changes in this one. We've seen a lot oh, of it in the move. second half. It's Sorry, I'm just, I'm just so when it's nice, about it's that. nice. When it's nice like that, you got to say something. <laughs> Cavender with the nice footwork. Again, she has a really good ability to just probe and make the right decision at the right time. And this is the time of the game against NC State where Morgan really shined and made good decisions for her team. We'll see what she does today. Top of the key, Blackshear no good. Out of the pack, Roberts tried to send it up to Williams, couldn't connect. Morgan, one man show. Just doing a great job of hustling, getting in the passing lane and turning it in opportunities for Georgia Tech. Now three players are in double figures for Georgia Tech. That's Swartz, Morgan, and Blackshear. Harden saw a lane, got it in the bucket. Harden with 25 minutes, nine points up to this point. Very effective, able to get to the basket and get the and one opportunity here. Just like you're just get, getting beat there, miscommunication on defense. Jackson and Juan Adonis checks in as Harden will step up for another opportunity for a three-point play. So Morgan out for Georgia Tech, so who plays the point guard for Georgia Tech, which I, I would assume it would be Swartz handling the basketball. Harden struggles. Continue from the free throw line, but I tell you what, with something that we've talked about from the beginning of the ball game to now is second chance looks for Miami. And you should never get those off of free throws. They average 13 second chance points to see Roberts here take the jumper. So nothing. And today they've got 15. 20 offensive rebounds to Georgia Tech's three. But as you mentioned, just have had difficulty in converting in that department. So Harden picks up her 
Well, she got there, but she got her with the body. First foul there, so that was on the floor. They'll get it underneath. 3.33 left in this ball game. We've seen a little bit of everything. Half court shots, droughts. As Jackson, you were asking who was going to be in charge at the top. Swartz asked for the ball. That's a good switch there. This should be a mismatch or no match with the Rana's getting the opportunity for the shot there. Oh, not an us. No good there, and just a little bit too much air under that one for Williams, because Cavender was wide open in the corner. A little too anxious there. So 16 turnovers for Miami. One of those things is the turnovers that they've almost fed themselves up. I would agree with that, especially here in the second half. First half, they had nine turnovers. Georgia Tech had six. So that's really a mismatch there with Arana. She used to be in the post. You can't go behind the screen. They talked about that in practice, getting over the top of that screen whenever they were setting them for Swartz. You cannot go behind that screen. 15 points for Cameron Swartz. Nice pick and pop there. And a rebound to add to it as well. How about the second half performance from Cameron Sport Swartz? Trying to will her team to another win and build on their first win streak of ACC play. And they're gonna find her here every time at the end of the shot clock. They want the ball in her hands. So Cavender for Cavender. Hannah Jackson for Miami. 10 on the shot clock to work with for Georgia Tech. Always pay attention to the inbounder whenever Swartz comes in. I would say pay attention to Swartz if she was sitting on the bench. And that's an easy call. Offensive foul. That's going to go against Bianca J Jackson. How long does Coach keep more up? Oh, there she is. I'm, I'm starting to think you have some type of device over there that the coaches can hear you when you need a, to see a player on the floor. There you go. There you go. That's what it is? It's, it's that gut feeling. You could have told me. That gut feeling. <laughs> and, I, and I thought she took her out because she was getting a little frustrated and tried Bianca Jackson, although I thought, I really thought they'd have Swartz handling the ball, but they wanted her to have the ball at the end of the shot clock instead of at the beginning. Blackshire comes in for one out of us. The big difference here for Georgia Tech, they go behind all the screens on the balls. You see Roberts getting the opportunity because of that. Really baiting Williams to shoot the shot, and you can see all jerseys on the inside. Morgan trying to outspeed everyone else, turns the ball over. Cameron Swartz said, you know what, I got your back. Gets it done, left alone, done. Off to the right. So probably not a good shot for her with that. That amount of time on the clock. You get the ball, you see Swartz shaking her head there. Move the ball around a little bit. Just a two possession ball game as we're less than 90 seconds left in this one. And Georgia Tech trying to get a win. And Wasco Center since 2021. Georgia Tech has done a great job of making Miami take the shots that they want them to take. And a foul, Cameron Swartz. Working baseline, but we also had some activity at the top of the key between Morgan and Williams a lot on that play. Oh no, that's a great block. She has a right to be upset there. Did she get her with the body? Coming absolutely, down? Absolutely not, that was a great block. Well, again, we had the benefit of the clock. I mean, of the, the replay, but yeah. You had Roberts and Morgan getting into it a little bit, the official trying to make sure that they keep control of this game. And she knocks out in the first. Here's next Thursday night's women's basketball doubleheader. Olivia Miles leads number nine Irish against Pittsburgh at six Eastern. Then Diamond Johnson and number 15 NC State take on Jules Spear and Wake 
Morris. All that action right here on AC Network and the ESPN app as we have a timeout on the play. And we've got a good one. Less than a minute to go. Two possession game. One possession game. Miami in charge. Vance, they're looking for an opportunity to score here. They haven't scored in the last three minutes of play. Four empty possessions. Who do they get the ball to? I think you go to Harden, post her up. She's either gotten an opportunity off that or she's gotten to the free throw line. Harden demanding the ball on the block against Blackshear. Cavender. Corner three, no good by Jasmine Roberts. We'll see where this is going to stay. Reset of the shot clock in Miami. We'll get it back. Again, you saw they were trying to get it to her, but she didn't have the right angle there. But again, another rebound. And they're going to look and see who that it was out on. I think the baseline camera might be able to give us a good look of where that goes off of. You see Harden flying in, but I think they're right. Yeah, it it's going like to stay with Black Miami. Here. If Harden has anything to do with it, she's going to let him know. Oh, I mean, she did a great job. Yeah, free timeout for both teams here. So Bruce Morris, Mark Berger, and Crystal Apelanis. Yeah, it looks like it went off the blacks here from that angle as well. So now, you almost have to trust Harden saying, that is definitely off of her. What do we need to set up now? 20 on the shot clock, you have the reset. Do they go back to Harden? What, what are you looking for at this point underneath? I, I think you try to go back to her right away. The last okay. time they took it out of bounds, she did try to post up right from the out of bounds and they missed her. But then if you don't get that, just work the ball around. They've been using screens on the ball and reading the defense. and. Um, they've done a great job of, of figuring out what to do off that, so we'll see what happens. Georgia Tech has three timeouts left, and Miami sitting with two. Another thing to note, Miami is in the bonus, so we'll see what looks we're going to see from Georgia Tech as well. And that's why you go to the drive if you don't get that first look out of bounds. If you're Georgia Tech here, you, you might want to consider switching everything because you're kind of you're kind of lined up. Your lineup is exactly the same, you know, four guards as Miami, and you can switch everything except for the screens on the on the big kids. So you said right away for Miami, even with the two point lead, do you try and burn some clock? No. You just run your play. You get your first best available shot. First best available. That one goes to Jasmine Roberts. And she pushes this to a two possession ball game. So now if you're Miami, doing a great job again. You didn't get the, uh, lay, uh, the post up, so you get to drive on the basket again from a guard from Miami is being paid up to two days early. Whenever I need cash out, Chime has more than 60,000 fee-free ATMs. Accessing my cash has to be easy. That's why I love Chime. Join me on Chime at Chime.com. Miami was able to score out of that last possession, pushing it to a two-possession ball game. Georgia Tech getting it back. Here's how we got here. A big part of it is Cameron Schwartz keeping Georgia Tech in this ball game, all 17 of her points coming in the second half. But for Miami, being able to sustain and really fight off the wave of Georgia Tech, how? A big part of that was Harden. When she came in, she was effective. Now here in special situation, again, you want to find Cameron Swartz. The ball's going to be in her hands, or it's going to be in Morgan's hands at some point at the end of the clock. Finds the hands of Morgan. And short on the three, Canes get the ball back, and immediately Morgan has to commit the foul. And this one will send Miami to the free throw line as they are in the bonus. That's the third foul for Morgan. I really think Coach Katie Meyer did a really good job with 
when she brought Harden in for those short times. That's when they settled down with their offense and they were able to get some scores and then bared down on defense against Georgia Tech. That one is good for Cavender. Nine points for her. It's her first trip to the free throw line. Drains it. So 16 seconds left in this ball game. Nell Fortner will call the timeout to advance. But you mentioned it, how Miami has been able to come into their home court once again and really put their sky report and game report together against a Georgia Tech team that is Red Hot coming into this ball game, winning three of their last four games. And a team that is really finding their footing in the youth that they have on the roster. I thought they did a really good job, especially in the first half, of dictating the types of shots that Miami took. And they were not able to hit the three-pointers, and they missed opportunities close to the basket. They didn't allow, I don't think in that first half, any of the mid-range stuff. But then Miami was able to do that in the second half, especially with Harden. And even though Swartz was able to get some shots off, they were able to, to hold them off. It wasn't a pretty December for Miami, as we mentioned it, just going one for four. A still at the top of the key, though. And that's not how you want to end things, but Cavender is going to set things up at the top of the key. Morgan does commit the foul with 8.9 left on the game clock. And that about sums it up. Miami just taking care of business in different ways at the top of the game. I said, it looks like their sense of urgency together, just really putting their foot on the gas, not finishing the way that coach would want them to finish on the inside, but it comes down to how they finish the game, and that's what they've been able to do to this point. Yeah, that sense of urgency, able to get some steals there. You were talking about their record. This is a great graphic, where they were in December, where they are here now. They can push this to eight and two. So Miami, after going three minutes without scoring, are now on a 6-0 run. And that's over the last 20 seconds. So life happens fast. Yeah, and, and we talked about this was a game that Miami needed. And then we, we talked off air before we began. We knew it wasn't going to be a blowout. We knew Georgia Tech was going to come to play. They've been getting more and more confident. And they're going to be a good team. That, a little frustrating for them right now because they're so young, but you can see they've got the defensive part of what Nell Porter wants to do down pat. It's that offensive end where they've got to grow some more. You talked about the growth that you want to see from them. I mean, almost right at their average, 56 points is Morgan looking for Cameron Schwartz at the top of the key. Launches it and gets the foul. That was very close to being down. Yeah, just to switch here again, you've got to go over the top of those screens if you're Miami when Schwartz is coming off them. Fortunate for them, the score is what it is, but you know, almost a four point play there. Cameron Swartz not found the first of three. Can't say enough about how she was able to step up in the second half after the slow start. Well, she's been the offensive spark they've needed all season. Just a veteran player, heady player, used to, you know, making big shots. It just, everyone else has struggled. But again, it's just youth, and you hate to say it, and they don't want to hear it, but they're going to be okay. Just really frustrating right now with that with that growth that still needs to come. But as Nell said, they're fighting, just having to get over the hump. But Miami able to protect home court, get the win against Georgia Tech. They move to eight and four in ACC play, 15 and eight overall as Georgia Tech drops to three and nine in ACC play.